Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right here, Jared. Doing right. How are you doing this fine evening? I have no complaints. No, I have many complaints. No, no. That you you should know not to not to follow up on that. <laughs> you know I have many complaints, but none I'm going to talk about on the podcast. You should know me well enough by now to know that's true. I do. Yeah. So why why do you tempt me then? Why do you tempt me to talk about things I shouldn't that's be talking about am, on Jared. the podcast? That's just yeah. who I am. Well, this is just who I am. Yet I'd be the bad guy if I started spouting off about shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. All right. Week nine of the Sloop Picks. Week nine. We got six games we are covering. Um, if you want to listen to our seventh game, check out Thursday's episode where we cover New Year Enemy Nebraska Edition. But we got six games here. Uh, so let's not waste too much time here. And we're going to go ahead and start off with a with a banger here. No, yeah. Notre Dame and Navy. Un yes, sir. Defeated 6-0 Navy. 11 and a half point uh, favorite for Notre Dame in this game at noon on ABC. What do you got in this one, Jared? All right. Navy has covered every single game this year, with the exception of week one, um, where they beat Bucknell by 28 points instead of 31 points. Outside of that, they've covered every single game this year. Um, Notre Dame is four and three against the spread this year, but are two and two the last four weeks. Um, I'm going to go with Navy here. Uh, this is sort of a when in doubt, pick the underdog situation. Uh, I, I, I do think Notre Dame ends up winning this. Navy ain't played nobody, Paul. Uh, if we're being honest, I love the storyline. It's fantastic. Uh, but I, I like the storyline more than I like the team, if I'm being honest. Uh, I do think Notre Dame wins. However, I think Navy uh, gets the cover. I think Notre Dame wins by seven, eight points. Yeah, th this is going to be a close game. I, I think just how Navy runs their, their offense here. I think, I think it's, they're going to keep this really close here. So 11 and a half points. I, I feel, I feel more, I feel more uncomfortable um, picking Notre Dame if it's like seven and a half or something like that. So yeah, I'll, I'll take, I will go ahead and take a lovely Navy midship to cover. All right. Midshipmen. Yeah. Me. I, we knew what you meant. We knew what you meant. Yeah. All right. Guess our guest picker, Gangland. Gangland from our, um, our one of our uh, sloop cats in our Discord. Discord. The sloop cats always be plugging. Um, he says here, sadly, Golden Domers. I'd love to see the armed forces do it, but they just don't have the dogs. He has the underdogs plus the spread. Um, he said the Golden Domers, right? That's what he said at the beginning. He's sadly, picking the Golden Domers. Sadly, Golden Domers. I'd yeah, love okay. to see the armed forces do it, but they just don't have the dog. He says underdog plus spread. So, yeah, it was it was slightly confusing, but he said, and if he wants to change this later, we'll because it sounds like he's saying, you know, sadly, the Golden Domers. But then he picked the radial that said to take the underdogs. Um, so it slightly confusing. I'm going to put him over on Notre Dame because I'm going to trust the words more than the radial. I'm going to trust the description over it. But if he wants to change it later, we'll let him change it later. But for right now, I'm going to put his token on Notre Dame. Okay. All right. Next pick. Next game. All right. Next game here, we have Missouri and Alabama. Uh, 3.30 kickoff on ABC here in Tuscaloosa. Oh, and by the way, in the, the Navy game is 
is in New Jersey, so it's not it's not in Notre Dame's backyard too. So just want to point yeah. that out. It's a it's um, a Navy homer. Alabama home against Missouri, a 13 and a half point favorite here and hoping to and hoping to redeem uh, their loss to Tennessee uh, last weekend here. Uh, so I guess it's my it's my pick here. I, lo- I would love to pick the Tigers to to cover here, but Missouri Missouri hasn't really done hasn't really done a lot recently here from what I've, what I looked here. I mean, you, you can say the same thing with Alabama too, but I mean, it's sure. in Tuscaloosa. It's, it's, it's tough winning, winning in Alabama there. And from everything that I've seen from, from Missouri recently, only a four point victory over Auburn. Like last, uh, last weekend there. And they, and they looked horrible against Texas A&M a few weeks ago too. Like I, yeah, I, I'm going to pick Missouri. I'll pick Missouri. Or, I'm sorry, not Missouri. Uh, Alabama to cover. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. Alabama hasn't covered uh, since they beat Georgia on September 28th. They've yet to, they've, they failed to cover since then. Um, Missouri struggled last week against a really bad Auburn team, but they did that without Brady Cook. If I'm giving actually actual gambling advice, which I'm not doing, we don't do that on this show. We don't real life gamble. This is for entertainment purposes only, uh, not financial advice. Oh, but, by the way, uh, Gangland Gangland says he has Notre Dame winning Navy covering. Oh, okay. Cool. Should have trusted the radio. Um, that being, uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah. This is not financial advice. This is not gambling advice. Don't real life gamble, yada, yada, yada. Uh, entertainment purposes only. That being said, I wouldn't put a dime on this game unless I knew for sure what the health status of Brady Cook is. If you watch the Auburn game, then you know that Missouri's offense was getting shit done when they had Cook, and you know that they looked like a dumpster fire when they didn't. If they have mm-hmm. Cook, they have an opportunity to not just cover, but to win this game. But we don't know that they will have Cook. Now, he did play yeah. at the end of the Auburn game. That would suggest that he is going to play it in the Alabama game. That would suggest that. That would suggest it. But we don't know. Since yeah. I don't know, I'm going to pick Alabama. Uh, and fair enough. I, we're not allowed to change these picks, but if I could change the pick and if I did find out that if I did find out that Brady Cook was definitely going to play, I would probably I would definitely swap over to Missouri. But as of Tuesday night, when we're recording this, uh, we don't know. So I'm picking we Alabama. Yep. All right. Gangland here says Milro redemption game number two in four weeks. Get ready for the QB one talk to ramp up. With you were struggling, especially if he does well. Don't worry, that hype will die back down when they inexplicably lose to Mississippi State or some other SEC bottom feeder. Uh, so he had he is picking up. He has favorite of the spread, so he has Alabama covering. All right, game number three. Who do we have? Uh, Illinois. Heading on over to Eugene to take on the Ducks. Uh, the Ducks are a two and a half, two and a half, 21. That, that sounds 21 that sounds and a better. half point. Yeah, 21 and a half point favorite over the Fighting Illini. Another 330 kickoff. This one is on CBS. I believe it is your turn, Jared. Who do, right. who do you got here? Do you got Oregon covering? We have Illinois making it a close one. So Illinois is, uh, as we sit five and two against the spread this year, Oregon's four and three against the spread this year. Um, however, it's worth noting that Oregon is playing a lot better now than they were in September. And they are on a, uh, they are currently on a two game streak against the spread. Um, Mm -hmm. that being said, um, even the improved Oregon, uh, failed to cover similar spreads against UCLA and Michigan state. 
Um, I have a lot of, a lot of conflicting feelings here. Uh, I'd never put actual money on this one because I, I don't feel super confident about it. Um, but the tiebreaker for me is that, uh, you know, as of the numbers we're seeing right now, when a team from the east side of the Big Ten goes west, they have trouble covering and vice versa. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the home team. Give me Oregon. Illinois is going to struggle um, score at scoring points here. They put up 27 against Michigan there. And I'd, I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if they scored more than 14 in this game. I, I, th- I think Oregon is just going to boat race this score 40 plus here to, to easy to easily cover. Yeah. I love the Illinois story. I do too. Absolutely. But I think it's mostly a story and I don't think it's that Illinois is actually all that great. They're a lot better than, than the Illinois teams of the past and they're getting better. And I think that just they're, they're doing a good job progressing, but as in the year of our Lord, 2024, I I don't think they're all that great. Mm, Yeah. All right. Gangland says here, uh, game three. I want to make sure I'm picking the right one. Here we go. Uh, he says F the ducks, but they are winning, but they are winning and big last week was very emotional for Bert. And I don't know how they respond to a very talented Oregon team. So he's got Oregon to cover. All right, Kyle, what is our fourth game? Our fourth game is uh is a quick ad break here oh so uh we are the slewcast head on over to the slewcast.com where you can find all of our lovely links such as our discord page discord.thesloopcast.com not sure what discord is it's it's a little community um chat uh application that you could install on your computer or on your phone uh just it's our little community to um, talk about Ohio State, talk about college football, talk about nonsense. It's a great area if you want to talk with Jared and I or other fellow Buckeye fans. Head on over to discord.thesoulcast.com. Or if you want to help Jared and I financially, you can head on over to patreon.thesoulcast.com for as little as $3 a month. You can become a patron of the Zoolcast. Uh So with that, we'll go ahead and take our first ad break and be right back. That was a better ad read than than either of us did on the last episode. Good job, Kyle. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next game. Texas heading on over to Nashville, where I, I think they're still trying to install that uh that goalpost that they ripped down, but uh I'm sure they'll have I, that I up hope, by then. I hope they do. <laughs> uh taking on Vanderbilt. Uh 18 and a half points. Eight and a half point favorite for the Longhorns here, where they where they only scored fifteen against Georgia. Uh, Four fifteen kickoff on the SEC network. Uh, I guess it is my pick here, um, similar to like Illinois, Jared. Yeah, everybody loves a good story. Everybody loves the Illinois story. Everybody loves the Vanderbilt story, but. Um, Sometimes these Cinderella stories uh, have to end somewhere. And I think, I think this is the week where v- that Vanderbilt story is going to end. And I, 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 I just, I just got to trust. But, but 18 Texas points here. worth. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a tough number, but I, I think Texas, so similar to like Ohio state, they, they find, they look at their loss here, find, find what went wrong. Cause I, I think defensively it wasn't, Texas wasn't all that terrible, uh, but offensively they got, they got to figure stuff out, but I, they're just too talented on the offense to, to, uh, to, to not score 15 or 20 points, but to score much more than that too. So I'll, I'm going to pick Texas to cover. Okay. Um, so here, here's fun fact. Both of these teams, five and two against the spread this year. Um, that being said, both teams failed to cover last week. 
Um, the other, you know, you could say that like a lot of the Vanderbilt numbers were low because I don't think we were expecting them to be all that good. Uh, but in Texas won't be overlooking Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt beat Bama earlier. You know, Texas lost yep. last week. They're coming into this game ready. They're, they're not overlooking Vanderbilt. They're coming into this game 100% ready. I fully expect. Um, so uh, the, problem, the problem I'm having, though, as Kyle pointed out, 18 is a lot of points. But, but I do think Texas feels like they have something to prove. So give me Texas to win and cover. All right. And Gangland says here, hook them. But I don't think they respond the way they need to after that loss to Georgia. The Texas offense was in a snuggy last week. and There might be some trauma for them to work through there. Combined with uh, Pavia and Bandy's offense. And this could be a tough one with limited possessions. He's got the underdog to cover. Or not to cover, but a underdog to um yeah to to cover yeah 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 uh Kyle that's the first break yeah between is. yeah I, we all picked the exact same line the first three games you and I picked Texas Gangland picks Vanderbilt that's the first that's the first uh Minority Report yeah that's what that mm-hmm. movie was about right gambling um. <laughs> The first minority opinion of the sloop pick so far this week. All right. Uh, next next game here, we have LSU heading on over to College Station at Kyle Stadium. Don't do uh, it. You're better than 7:30 that. Kick off, 7.30 kickoff here, and uh, Texas A&M is the favorite over LSU by two and a half points. I believe it is your turn, Jared. Who do you yeah. got in this matchup? So uh, I almost called him Louisiana State, which is, of course, correct, but no one ever says it. So it felt weird. So I stopped myself. Um, kind of like USC. I feel like people call USC Southern Cal at least sometimes, though. You almost yeah. never hear someone call <laughs> LSU Louisiana State. Um, uh, so Louisiana State had a tough start to their uh, season. Uh, they lost to USC, as as the previously mentioned USC. Um, and they started the season 0-4 against the spread. However, since then, um, they've gone 3-0 and against the spread. Uh, Texas A&M also started the season uh, with an early loss. And they've yet to, at least according to the spread, write that ship. They've obviously won, you know, big games. But against the spread, they're still two and five on the season. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go with the when in doubt, pick the underdog. Because I was honestly a little bit surprised that Texas A&M was favored in this game. Um, and two points isn't. Isn't a lot, but yeah, when in doubt, pick the underdog. Give me LSU. Yeah. Uh, Texas A&M struggled last weekend against uh, Mississippi State, 134 to 24. Um, they struggled recently with Arkansas, 21 to 17, while LSU um, um, had a better victory over Arkansas and did have the uh, – overtime win over Mrs. Uh, Ole Miss recently as well, too. So I I guess when in doubt, pick the quarterback, and I, I'm going to go with LSU in this one. That's that's also a when in doubt rule that we have. Mm-hmm. Although when in doubt, pick the quarterback, I think, for me anyway, is more of a winning the game thing. When in doubt, pick the underdog is more of the spread thing for me yeah but you know everyone's free to interpret everything as they please all right kyle next game all right uh well first the guest picker oh the guest my bad. picker here my bad. Uh, <laughs> uh he says he has a and m uh some people want to watch the world burn i just want to see it t- to the sec bring on the madness and let these teams destroy each other with their mid products on the field 
Uh, he had Texas A&M. He did. Have, he he did. He is uh, picking the favorite in this one. Okay. Uh, next game. Penn State and Wisconsin in Madison. Uh, night game. One of our rules, Jared. This is one of our rules. Don't play the Big Ten West there is no at more night. Big, there's no more Big Ten West, Kyle. I know. I know. But six and a half points. <laughs> Penn State Penn State coming coming to town here. Has has Penn State really had a uh no, I, I guess they did uh recently at USC. I was gonna say, did they really really have a tough road game yet? But they I, I guess at USC, sure. Yeah. Sure, but Oh, on boy. one hand, going west when you're the Eastern team has proven tough in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other hand, USC's three and four. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I just, I just really don't trust Wisconsin's offense here. I. But you trust Penn State's offense. Nah, that's a good point too. Uh, <laughs> I don't trust either offense. I guess now we're talking <laughs> Big Ten. Uh, gosh, this one, this one's tough. This one's tough. Like, which which Penn State team are we going? Which Penn State we're we going to see? Are we finally going to see Penn State actually get it together here and actually? Um, have a big win here um or are we going to see like the team like we saw against ucla where they really struggled to put them away or against bowling green state where they had to come from behind to to win that game too i just you also never hear anyone put the state on bowling green just another observation uh, yeah true <laughs> um, it's, it's correct Gosh, I, I keep going back and forth. Six and a half is a is a great number to me. To me, this is this was the toughest game for me to choose. I don't agree at all. But I mean, i I gotta try. I gotta trust Penn State's defense better than I do with Wisconsin's defense. So I, I'm go with the Nittany Lions to cover. Oh, Kyle, you and I finally differ on a pick. This is our first difference so far. Gangland has gone against us on picks four and five. This time he's siding with me and you're the odd dog out. Uh, Kyle, I I totally disagree. I I do not like Penn State. Uh, I do not think that they're worthy of their ranking. Um, I think they've been lucky to win some of the games that they've won. Um, You know, much like LSU, Wisconsin had a tough start to the year. you know, they lost badly to Alabama. They, you know, started terribly against the spread. Uh, but they have covered their last three games. Meanwhile, Penn State's only covered two games all season. Uh, and they're 0-3 against the spread in Big Ten games. And definitely uh, see that with the close victory over Illinois, um, 16 point victory over UCLA and that three point overtime win against USC. Yeah. So to me, Wisconsin has the hot hand. Give me the Badgers to cover and to win. I yeah. don't go on the road outside of the Eastern time zone in the big 10. At night. All right. <laughs> All right. And gangland. Big 10 West think. just sounded a lot better in that rule. It did. Uh, the spread being a touchdown makes this really interesting. Penn State really struggled out West, but figured out a way to come back in that one. Can they do it in the Midwest? I think so. But I think Luke Fickle will be that annoying mosquito that can't catch and hang around for too long in this one. Nittany Lions win, but Wisconsin covers. All right. We already did the 
Ohio State and Nebraska game. As Kyle pointed out uh, at the beginning of the show, um, we do all pick Ohio State to win and cover. If you want to hear us talk about that in more detail, uh, you can go listen to the Thursday episode called Know Your Enemy Nebraska. Um, while I'm doing plugs, we're now don't go away now. We're doing we're do, we're playing our new favorite game, which we call Chaos Theory. When we get back from this ad break, but we are going to an ad break. Um, Kyle covered most of the main stuff. Just make sure to check out the sloopcast.com. From there, you can find links to all of our other stuff, including our Apple podcast page, our Spotify podcast page, um, two separate merch stores, one of which is merch.thesloopcast.com, where you can buy uh, Sloopcast specific merch, such as the shirt that Kyle's wearing, unless someone took that down for copyright. I'm not sure if that one's still up. Listen, a lot of our stuff bumps up against copyright rules. So if there's something in the Sloopcast store that you like, you should probably go buy it while you still can. All right. That's just a warning from me to you. If there's something in the Sloopcast store that you like, you better go buy it. Um, and then is it available? It is. Okay. The, the shirt that Kyle's wearing is in fact still available. Um, Uh, and if you don't want specific podcast merch, you want stuff that doesn't look like it's from a podcast. I understand. I get it. We have uh, a whole different merch store, which just celebrates the state of Ohio uh, in a lot of different, a lot of fun ways. Uh, and you can find that store at 7071. That's 7071, like the interstates, uh, dot the sloopcast.com. That's 7071 dot the sloopcast.com. Uh, here are the regular ads now. I do like that Columbus Panhandles one. I, I own one of those. Um, I think I've worn it on the show before. Um, Kyle, it is time for Chaos Theory. If you're new to this show, then you know. Kyle, will you buy me this shirt? Kyle, will you buy this shirt for me on Jared's birthday? That's not how Jared's birthday works, Zach. <laughs> you got to you got to win the um you got to win the sloop picks. You got to win the sloop picks. Um chaos theory, if you're new here, this is how the chaos theory game works. You have to pick an unranked team to beat a ranked team. You get points based off of the <laughs> inverse of the ranking. What does the inverse of the ranking mean? Well, if you pick the team that is, for example, Oregon, if you picked Oregon to lose this week because they're ranked number one, then you would get 25 points. If you were to pick, who's 25th right now? Um, whoever's 25th, 25th is Vanderbilt. 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 That's right. If, for example, you picked, um, Vanderbilt to lose this week, which you can't do because they're playing Tennessee and that doesn't count or Texas. excuse me, Texas, Texas, the other orange T team. Um, you, you can't do that. But if you did, if you could, and you did, then you'd only get one point. Ooh. Everyone understands. <laughs> There's a lot, there's a lot of teams off this week. There's, there's a lot, lot of teams lot off of teams. and there's a lot of ranked teams playing each other. Uh, as far as like weeks go, this, this week is all killer, no filler. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, there, there, there are great games, but there aren't a lot of games. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not a very deep roster of games, but the games we have are going to be really good. I think, um, but yeah, there's a lot of teams off and there's a lot of ranked teams playing each other. So uh, there's not a lot to choose from here. Uh, I'm going to go yeah. ahead and go first. And the yep. reason I want to go first is because I already gave away my pick. I'm picking Penn State to lose. Um, I, I said it during the slow picks. I expect Wisconsin to not just cover, but to win. Um, I think Penn State's been playing it a little close to the edge all year. They've had a lot of 
games they're supposed to win big that they just barely squeaked out. I think they have severe offensive issues. Um, and I just don't trust James Franklin in close games, in big games, quite frankly. I think Wisconsin has a hot hand right now. I think that, you know, despite, like, like I said, during the slow picks, they had kind of a slow start to the year, but I think they're really starting to get things going. Um, even offensively starting to get things going a bit. It was in, in Wisconsin. And again, it is in Madison at night. So I'm, I'm going to go with the Badgers to win this game and go with Penn state to lose. And Penn state is ranked number three right now, making this a 23 point score. That'd be huge. That, that would, would be, be huge. huge. Uh, I'm going to go one at not a lot of points this week for me here. I'm not going to go all not going to go and and uh, <laughs> and pick um, yeah pick Penn State or <clears throat> or or whatever too. But I'm I'm going to go with a game that's playing. Uh, uh, actually, when this is released, the game already happened. Uh, I'm going to go this okay. Thursday. I'm going to go this Thursday here. All right. I'm going to go with the the fighting Kyle McCords over <laughs> okay. Pittsburgh. Over All Pittsburgh right. here. Uh, and what's Pittsburgh ranked? They are 19th. They're 19th. Nin- so that's seven points? That's seven points, yep. That's a That's a good solid bet. I think yours is pretty likely to hit. Pittsburgh is a six point favorite in this game. Yeah. And Penn state's an eight point favorite, seven point favorite. So. Yeah. uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, it is in Pittsburgh at night as well too. So they, Pittsburgh's got that going for them, but. Yeah. And it's a Thursday night game, which. I always think in my mind favors the home team, whether that be true or not, that it's how that works in my head. It's a good quote. Yeah. I have no, I have no data to back that up whatsoever. Uh, who, who does gangland pick? It says rock em, chalk em over the Kansas state meows. <laughs> All right. For everyone <laughs> trying to follow along at home, uh, he, uh, we have, a. Uh, Kansas State losing. Uh, Kansas State is currently ranked 16th, so that is worth 10 points. Kyle, this is the first time in a long time we don't have any duplicates in uh, since week five, as a matter of fact, that we don't have any duplicate picks. Yeah. Not, not, not that we, we haven't won that many times. We haven't won out of all There have the been week, several I've... weeks in which there have been no correct answers to have, though. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Week four, we had one winner. Uh, the get the guest pickers. Week five, I had Ole Miss. Uh, week six, we had two upsets there. Um, Louisville um, lost, and Michigan lost as well. And that was where um, uh, where Jared got his points, and the guest picker picked up four more there. So, um, yeah. This could be an interesting week, especially if if Wisconsin uh, pulls out the uh, pulls up the upset here. Yeah, um, I feel good about my pick. I feel I I feel good about my pick. That's all I'm saying. Um, I, I'm not saying it's a hundred percent going to hit, but I think risk reward. I think it's one of it's a, it's a pick I feel good about. Sure, sure. All right, um, Kyle. I think. I think that's the end of the show. Um, I'm I'm going to ask you, although this time I'm going to ask you very slowly because I think you felt a little bit ambushed last episode. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? There was something came up. I know nobody really wants to talk about them because it is football season. Okay. But the Ohio State basketball team... Oh, Kyle, everyone's turning off the podcast. I know. They just landed a four-star power forward out of Omaha, Nebraska, uh, Amar Bynum. Uh, He is a top 100 recruit for the 2025 class. Yeah, uh, it's a a great pickup. Number Um, number, number 17 center uh, in this class. 
Um, anything else in Kyle's corner? I think that's it. I know there was a lot of chat. Well, just something interesting since we have a little bit of time here. Uh, interesting, interesting thing. Cause this has been a talk, uh, Tuesday here, uh, especially with, uh, Michigan's loss last weekend. A lot of people are really looking at, Oh, what, what's, what's the spread? What's, what's the, what's, um, how's the game looking, uh, so far? I know we're, we're, we're about what, six weeks or so away from, from five. the game here. Five, I think the five weeks. Five weeks? I, I can't. Yeah. Well, I think it depends upon if you count this week. Yeah, it is five. Yeah, five. From when we're recording this, five, five and a half. It's five and a half weeks when we're recording it. So. Yeah, it's for at, at the end of Saturday, it'll be five weeks. Mm hmm. Uh, so. Currently, currently, as we speak, Ohio State is a 19 and a half point favorite to over Michigan. They think Michigan's better than Nebraska? Because I disagree. <laughs> I I hard disagree. If if that's how I can interpret that. This is this this would be if it stands, this would be the fourth largest um point spread in this rivalry. Vegas since, doesn't since, lie, since, Jerry. In the, la in the last 20 years. Vegas is a reflection of people's opinions more than it is a reflection of fact. Mm -hmm. Vegas's mm -hmm. goal more often than not is to try to get as many people as possible to vote for both teams the, to, the, the so that they can just collect the fees. That's what they the want to do. The largest spread was in 2020 when Ohio State was a 30 point favorite in that game. Nice. But we all but we all know what happened in that game. Yep, yep. Um all right, Kyle. That's the end of the show. Yes. Yep, that's it. All right. Do a quick Jared's corner. Everyone go vote. It's your civic duty. Even if you don't like anyone. They're they're if you're looking at the presidential election and you just kind of want to say, no, thank you. I, I get it. Uh, but the, the local there, there are local things to vote on. There, there are important state things to vote on state representatives and state, uh, amendments and state ballot issues and local ballot issues, your local representatives, all of these things matter and they matter a lot. So, I know there's a lot of people not happy with the presidential candidates and I'm not taking any sides on that. I just know there's a lot of apathy out there right now and I get it. Um, but I, what I will say is that all of the local stuff counts and that you, I encourage you to go vote. Even if you leave that first item blank, even if you leave that first item blank, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, but go vote. Um, that's it. That's all. That's all I have to say on that. And <laughs> it's nothing personal. I don't like anybody. There's a lot of people who feel that way. And I, and I hear you. Um, and I hear you. I just saying your local stuff matters too. You're not just voting for the president all of, and you're not just voting for senators and the federal Congress, your local Congress matters, your school board matters, your mayor matters, all of that other stuff, the ballot issues, all of that stuff matters. Go vote. Um, all right. Tonight's uh, ending band will be the Raging Nathans, just like it was yesterday. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters and go vote. Uh, these are the Raging Nathans. <laughs>